to Augur, which is really awesome because you can watch my talk on YouTube anyway. So, so you're telling us to leave? So should we leave there? Go enjoy Augur. <laughs> no, it's fine. You can also stay here. I'm, I'm ready. I'm all mic'd up. All right. So I think we're going we're gonna to go ahead and get started again. So we have here, and he's going to talk about the uh, Kerbal Lab and Pulse Miner. <laughs> ah, thank you. So what do cars, buses, trains, and planes all have in common? they solve a transportation need. They get us from one place to another. But how come we have different modes of transportation to solve the same basic problem? It's because they had different constraints, different goals in mind when they were created. And the same thing is happening as we're building software for metrics. And that is what this talk is about, how we when we understand software health and the way that we want to understand and use it shapes the way that we built software. So we started the Chaos Project really to understand the question of how can we know if an open source project is healthy, how can we use metrics for this, and we set out to investigate this question. And we came up with several different ways that we can understand project health, we understand that there are many different um, indicators. We can look at activity, community, documentation, a lot of different ways to approach project health. And the way we decide to approach this is by looking at metrics in all of these different areas. And so we identify data sources. And luckily, we work in open source, and open source communities use software tools where a lot of the data is collected on what is happening in these projects. So as chaos, we are trying to use the data to create metrics. And this is basically the baseline. We have data, and we want to build metrics. But there are different ways that we go about doing this as we are building different pieces of software. And each software team has different philosophies on what they want from the metrics, what they want to get out of it. And so this is where the story of Grimoire Lab and Crossminer, two different tools, come in to compare how this is playing out. And when I talk about philosophy, I'm, I'm thinking of the definition where uh, it's a theory or attitude held by a person or organization that acts, uh, using it to act in a certain way as a guiding principle. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due. This work really has been done by Valerio, who cannot be here, but I was talking with him about his idea to talk about how software is shaped differently because of the goals behind the software creation. And Valerio has been very much involved with chaos. He has uh, developed a lot of the Grimoire Lab tools, I've been a Chaos, uh, Google Summer of Code, Mentor. So he's been around doing this. Unfortunately, he cannot be here. So I'm happy to deliver some of the insights that he has gained. And when I talked with him about it, I asked him, what, OK, so how is it, how is Grimoire Lab and Crossminer approaching metrics differently? And it comes down to that Grimoire Lab is asking how is one project's community healthy? And then how can we improve the health of one project? So looking at the community activity and processes within a single community. Now in comparison, Crossminer had a very different goal looking at project health. They asked which is the healthiest project to adopt? So the goal is to 
compare many different projects at the level of adoption and quality and popularity. So these different starting points of what they wanted to achieve shaped the way that the software was architectured. You might have seen a Grimoire Lab architecture before. We have on the left the data sources, then we have a Percival that consumes the data and puts it into an elastic search database. Then we have Grimoire Elk, which enriches the data. So we still have the original data points, very granular, very fine data points with individual activities that are enriched. There are some calculations. The identity management is a big part of what Grimoire Lab supports. And then this enriched data set is used to build dashboards, to build reports, to run analysis on whatever your changing analysis needs are. Because it has the original data still, we can drill down in the data and even if we have new questions, new metrics we want to run, we can go to the same data back to do that. This is what a Grimoire Lab dashboard looks like. It's for the chaos community. So you can actually go to chaos.beturge.io and play with the data yourself. I just updated uh, the chaos structure yesterday on it. So now we have all of the correct working groups in there with all the repositories. And I just want to highlight here real quick that we get information at the author level, at the individual activities that they are doing. We can pull out um, which organizations are involved in which working groups and where are the hotspots in our community. And we can dissect it and aggregate the data in different ways. So this is some of the highlights of what Grimoire Lab supports because of the way that the architecture was built and the data is stored. Now if we go to Crossminer, we see a somewhat similar workflow. We still on the very right have to collect the data. The data is then combined into metrics and calculated on. But then it's only the metric provider that actually stores down into the database. And it's done at the project level. So metrics are calculated for the different project because the goal is to compare many projects. So this is what this architecture does. Um, storing the metrics after they are calculated. Now if we look at what the, a dashboard looks like, it's using the same, um, same source code. It's the same dashboard tool, Qbeater, that also Grimoire Lab used. So they reused our component that we have in Chaos to build their front end, which is pretty cool. It, you know, open source reusing tools is awesome. But you can see here that there's no longer the focus on what are individuals doing. It's really the project level here. So here's the um, different metrics and then across different projects and building out a model for calculating how well the projects stack up against each other on these metrics. And Crossminer implements the same goal question metrics approach that we use and aggregates it. So here's a screenshot of goals. So if we have the goal of quality, there are a lot of different metrics in the back end that are aggregated to then be shown here in a grid how the projects stack up. And that allows someone using Crossminer to compare. The way that it is done in the background, this is the administrative tool, is there is a quality model which has, that's the dot all the way on the left, and then it has all the goals like quality, activity, compliance, and then the 
questions for each and then the individual metrics all the way on the right. And there are rules for how they are combined to come up with that one number that we can show in the dashboard. So that's one of the things that CrossMiner has focused on. And there is some discussion on bringing this idea back into Grimoire Lab. Um, because now that we have someone, Valerio, who has worked on both, he's like, yeah, we can port this idea back into Grimoire Lab. Showing again the power of open source. Mm -hmm. So if we, if we compare directly how Grimoire Lab and CrossMiner um, approach this differently is that Grimoire Lab is focused on the community metrics, on the individual small activities, whereas CrossMiner was more interested at the high level project quality project metrics. And for that, they had to make a decision on what kind of data they store. Grimoire stored the fine-grained data. CrossMiner stored the course, the big metrics only. So you can also not go back and change your metric strategy. That's an implication here, that if you want to do that, you have to recalculate all of the metrics. You cannot go back and um, aggregate the metrics across different projects. So that's uh, the multi-project that Grimoire Lab supports, where you can then filter however you want it. With CrossMiner, you cannot. Once you have the metric for the project, it's, it's done. You can no longer separate out like we have it for chaos with different working groups. And CrossMiner has the quality model, which uh, is a way to simplify comparison, which was the original goal here. Um, so that, that's, that's really what this is uh, about. And the, the main message that I wanted to, to get across here is that we have different ways of looking at metrics and data to look at project health, and this is shaping how we are doing our, how we are building the software. And so I'm opening up the discussion really amongst all of us, not just with me, on what this is um, doing, because community health has multiple meanings, and we are shaping the indicators and metrics not just how we define them, but also how we implement them. And then we can build quality models. I know there has been work on this for many years, and it's something that we, we can bring into chaos. We have not gone there yet. But just opening up the discussion, what are your thoughts? Have you seen different philosophies? Um, yeah, I have a few questions here to spark the discussion. Go ahead, Matt. Are you talking about this one? Yeah. So, um, so those are the metrics on the far right. Correct. Are those obviously those can be modified by the by the person using CrossMiner? Yes. To actually assemble, say, whatever quality in a slightly different way. Okay. Yes. And so then go to the slide before this. So, um, I I really like this. Because this, if I'm reading it right, then says filters. The filters are defined by an organization who's using CrossMiner to say that we have achieved a five or a whatever, a two or a one. And so this is starting to give like kind of that red, yellow, green. Yep, same idea. Yeah, it's kind of it's blue, blue, or blue. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Or, you know, like, and so I guess the way I read this is for the activity across the bottom. A lot of those tell me that something's not doing great. Is that how I read that? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that's great. This is good to see. 
Yeah. It's just a comment. No, awesome. <laughs> yeah, CrossMiner is a research project that is still ongoing, but I, I do think we are learning things here that may find their way back into so Grimoire Lab, the, hopefully. <laughs> Um, we'll have to talk to Valerio on okay. what what that is. He told me it can be done. It's just a matter of um, doing it. That's how I understand it. Okay. Um, so now that we understand how it can be done, we need manpower to actually develop it. Yeah, because I think a lot of what we hear sometimes is trying to, like, because we've been hearing all day, there's so many metrics out there and trying to get that down to something that's Observe, quickly observable. Yep. Based on filters that somebody that's that's great. So. Cool. Any other thoughts or I even take comments, like Matt's comment. It's really to spark discussion as we are maybe everyone who builds software is in the other room. I I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so is everything in this in this modifiable by the user? So quality, activity, compliance. I guess it both of the rules, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the way that I understand it is these are the atomic metrics. Yep. And then we can build composite metrics, which are here the golds. Right, yep. Those are questions, right? Uh, yeah. True. Okay. Questions. And then these are called golds. Or we could call them focus areas, metrics, and then atomic metrics, or something like that. Whatever the terminology is, yeah. And then here in, in uh, CrossMiner, I, if I was in the admin interface, I could select CrossMiner, and that's a different quality model, which has different criteria combined, different metrics combined. What's the This one is just the the quality model okay. and just the root. What do you think is the purpose of comparing comparing the different papers to decide which project to adopt at your office? Yep. Yep. Um I think Eclipse so the the question was what is the purpose of aggregating all this data into simple numbers and being able to compare across projects. And I believe a partner of this research project is Eclipse, and they are also looking at, okay, which are the projects that we should include or not include. Awesome. Well, thank you. I hope that some of the ideas from this will make it into our chaos discussions. Yeah.